I'm a little new at the mic thing, so I hope everyone can hear me okay and I'm not echoing too much. I'm also a former STEM teacher, so I find it difficult not to walk, but they've asked me to stay put in front of the mic um, podium, so bear with me as I, I get comfortable here. So thank you all for coming today. I'm really excited about this. This has been a project a year in the making. Um, as uh, Haley mentioned, we're a K-12 school in Rhode Island, and ironically, a small K-12 school district in Rhode Island, um, which is hard to believe, getting even smaller. Uh, we're uh, primarily uh, a public school, but we also do CTE, career and tech education. So people come to our school from neighboring communities to get uh, different levels of, uh, uh, of courses. For example, we teach biomedical, engineering, computer science, etc. So it's a fun place to work, it's a dynamic place to work, and we do a lot of interesting things. We, like many of you, converted to Canvas. Uh, we did that about two years ago. Uh, it was a great decision for us. We really love Canvas. We're lucky to be in a K-12 world because our teachers really do adopt quickly. So all of our teachers were using it in the first year. But we ran into a problem fairly quickly, and that was Gradebook. Um, we were using the Canvas Gradebook, and there was not really a good way for our administration, for our guidance counselors, um, for coaches, uh, for people to really track numbers of students and to see how they were doing. The only way we could really do it with Gradebook was you had to go in and have more rights than we wanted to give someone. I see some of you nodding, so you're familiar with that problem. And then they'd be able to see multiple students, but they'd have to look up as the student and look at the Gradebook and so on. So my commitment coming to Canvas last year was to solve that problem. Uh, we needed a way to be able to monitor our students and we needed a way to do it in real time with our Canvas data and with our SIS data. Now we're an Aspen school. Um, I've worked with many um, Power School, School Max, um, many of our in our state are Skyward. Um, it doesn't really matter what SIS you're on. Uh, you're just getting a feed like you would to anything else and importing it into the system. So I can talk about that more with you when we're further along, if you like. Um, but the SIS is less critical because you're just getting certain data elements out of your SIS and bringing it into. The name of the tool that we're talking about is Neural Learning and the name of the product in, in Neuro Tools. Um, some of the folks here are from Neuro visiting with us today, Amy and Jen. So if you have questions as we proceed, um, feel free to come up to them at the end or they do have a booth here on site. We ended up partnering with these folks because we couldn't find a way to do it ourselves. I went to every session on data manipulation that I could find last year and I'm a former uh, business person working in the business world of technology. I was very comfortable writing queries but I'm one of two in my school. I don't have the resource or the time to do that. So what ended up happening is by partnering with Neuro, and it's been a partnership. They deal with my neuroses on a daily basis, and they've been wonderful to me. Uh, we got together, they had a higher ed tool, and I said, this is kind of close. Do you think, poor Amy, do you think we could do this for K-12? And they said, sure, let's try it. So it's been a year-long process, and what you're going to see today, we're hoping, and I'm going a little slower than I planned on, because they're trying to bring up the internet for us, too. Because if I'm a technologist and I'm sitting in the room like you are, I don't like vaporware. I want to see it. If I can't hold it, I can't touch it, I can't play with it, I don't believe in it. So PowerPoint, you know, right? PowerPoint is not how I wanted to do this presentation, and we're hoping to get to that, okay? So I came up with this title that Okay, a little techie, right? A little boring. Now that I'm at Mission Impossible, I feel like I should have been much more creative. But combining data from Canvas and your SIS for response to intervention in K-12, that's really what it's about. Um, I wrote this a little small. Um, I'll repeat it at the end if anyone's interested in, in reaching out. Uh, again, the name's Ann Mariano. I've been in um, K-12 for about 15, 16 years. Uh, I worked in publishing for years, and then I did a little stint in higher ed, but my heart belongs in K-12. Um, so I've been there ever since. That's my contact information. As I said, we're a regional school district, uh, very small in Rhode Island, in the western part of the state. I actually live in Massachusetts and commute on in. So let's talk a little bit about what, we, what we've been doing and what we've been trying to accomplish. So our goal has been to take our demographic data from Aspen, and our student information system, and as I mentioned to you, it doesn't really matter the student information system. It's like any poll you're going to do. 
You could either do it as a CSV uh, yourself or you, we're setting it up to do it on a nightly basis or as often as we prefer to. Um, so our demographic data, whether or not a student has special needs, a 504, um, ESL, gender, uh, home district in our case because we have multiple towns, um, whether or not they're a CTE student. Uh, so if they're in our career and tech education program, we might want to monitor students who are, who are in engineering. We might want to monitor students who are in biomed, so on. So we want to be able to research and pull data back from what we'll term as cohorts. Uh, the grades and the assignment status, you'll see when we get into the system, they come from Canvas. So that was the key piece that Noro could help us with. Um, Hopefully we'll get to see the interface. I do have some slides that show the interface if the wireless doesn't cooperate for us. But the idea is that on a real-time basis, the tool connects to Canvas, pulls out the grades from the gradebook and the status of the assignments. So we can record on whether or not a student has su successfully submitted an assignment or not on time. That will change how we do things this fall because our teachers will put things in the grade book and in assignment that don't necessarily have to be turned in, right? They'll just put something in the grade book. The assignment is never completed. So when we ran the data the first time, some of our students had 500 flags of never submitted assignments. And when we checked, they were doing okay. So what was the problem? Problem was, in a sense, on our end, we have to make sure that when we do an assignment, something is submitted. Doesn't, it's not as big a deal as it sounds like, so we're just going to do an online submission with everything. Hi, teacher, I turned it in. If it's not something that they wouldn't hand in electronically. Does that make sense? And please feel free to ask questions. I'm a teacher. I like to answer questions. I hate to hear myself talk. Although it's not bad right now, so we're doing OK. OK, okay so we're, and then we wanted another piece. Sorry, getting too close to that one. Um, we wanted to be able to bring in assessment data. So we wanted to uh, do some queries on assessment data, on grades, and on uh, demographics. The assessment data that we use, we're in Rhode Island. We're a park state. Um, I've been in Massachusetts, NECAP state. It varies wherever you are. The key, again, is that you can get the data out of whatever your assessment system is and have um, your local student identifier in that export. So long as you have that, you can bring it into the system. So right now, we're bringing in our park data. Of course, the state decided to go away from park next year. Sorry, Amy. Um, we went through all that work for park, and it's new, whatever next year brings. Our PSAT data, because that's going to be a new requirement. Everyone has to take the PSAT a little younger now and do it multiple times. We wanted our SAT data, ACT, and we use STAR. I don't know if any folks in the room are big STAR people, really important to our reading specialists. So we wanted to do, be able to do some uh, comparison and some analysis on STAR data. Uh, the system is role-based, so obviously I would go into it as an administrator. I can see the entire uh, school system, or I can have it building-based, so my principal only sees her school, my other principal only sees her school, or female administration team. Guidance counselors would only see their students, teachers only their students, and specialists would only see certain cohorts. So for example, I might have a reading specialist working with a group of students, or I might have a special needs person assigned to a certain cohort of students that they're monitoring. They could only see those students. We can set up those roles very granular in the system. Does that make sense? Okay. What you'd expect, but it was really important to us that, and especially in a union environment, teacher A doesn't see what teacher B is doing. Right. Only the principal can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, great question. And that's something where uh, the question was, how do your guidance counselors get assigned to certain um, students? Uh, we'll actually do it. There's a cohort feature in the system. And in our instance, it's by grade. So we'll assign them by grade. Uh, it really depends. Great question. So you can do things, in, mostly you can um, query for groups of students and then you assign them to a particular cohort. Okay. Um, this is what the system will look like, hopefully we'll get there. Um, so basically what happens is your students are charted um, on a daily basis, depending how long you want to do the feed from Canvas. So what we're reflecting here is that you can see how many students are off path, we're not that bad. 
um, what you're seeing reflected there is how many students had it hand in, hadn't handed in assignments. We had too many that were recorded as not handing in assignments, so hence we're going to make that change in the fall on how we record that data. So when a student is off path, it might reflect one of two things. They're not handing in their work, or their grades have gone below a certain threshold, and you establish the threshold. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think we said 65, or I'd have to double check my data, but you know, we say, so if a student has a grade, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, that's not good with a microphone, um, who falls below a certain threshold, it will flag in the system and they'll show up um, as being off target. That makes sense. Um, here you can see I had to gray out the student information, um, but you can kind of see these would be your students, and the photos would show up there if you have your photos in your system. Um, so each student shows up one after another, and you get a quick color code when the system comes up. So if it's pink, it's, they're not doing well, yellow and blue. So depending on how, how they're doing, you get a quick visual and say, oh, I need to look at this student quickly or not. Um, these are just some of the screens. Again, um, Haley's just told me we're going to be okay online, so I'll just show a little bit here, and then we'll get into the system. But this kind of gives you an idea. We're still working on what we want our assessments to look like, but the basic gist is we want the data in the system to be able to query against it. So we want as much assessment data as we can do. We also want attendance data. Prior to working in Foster Gloucester, I worked in one of the poorest communities in the country, Central Falls, Rhode Island. Um, kind of famous, uh, unfortunately. And Central Falls, we were doing an analysis of whether or not attendance impacted grades. And we spent all this time developing a great data warehouse, and we did do the analysis. It didn't come back with what we anticipated. But that's the kind of thing we want to be able to do in this environment. Um, does attendance impact grades? If I'm tardy every day, what happens? Many different factors that we want to be able to query on and play into. Um, this is my favorite part and the hardest thing we got to work and really what makes the system shine for us and I hope if anyone else is interested, real-time grades from Canvas. So what you see on that slide is grades as they exist in Canvas in each course. So I'm looking at a student here with each grading period, so I'm seeing uh, in the upper left-hand corner, sorry I took my glasses off to look at the screen, um, the student is only in a second semester course, but we can see that they have an 83.4. But that gives us real-time data. As an, as an educator now, I can go in and look at little Jenny or little John, click on it, and I say, how are they doing right now? I don't have to go into Canvas. I can go right into the system and I can see the student, and it can also flag me if they go below a threshold on, on a grade on a given day. Does that make sense? We keep a record of all four quarters. That was also one of our challenges moving to Canvas. It was a higher ed model, so everything was semester-based. I don't know if any of you battled the, the, the battle of the quarters. Um, we went through that, and it's come out great. Haley was instrumental in helping us with that. But it's, it's been an interesting process. But we want to be able to query against, hey, you're doing great in quarter one, but what, what's going on in quarter four? So we, again, we could check against particular data points and see how people are doing and what's going on with a student. A flag is generated for students. So for example, a flag might be generated for a student if they don't submit assignments, or a flag could be generated for a student again because they fall below the threshold for their grade. The idea is that you then take a flag and convert it into a case. Um, I don't know who used the terminology MTSS, RTI. Whatever you may use, it's a response to intervention model. So we're not just looking at the data. We're now taking it and proactively flagging the student, inviting others to be involved in the process to come up with a plan to solve whatever the issue is. So again, flags can be converted. Once a case is created, an action plan is then generated, and documents and notes can be associated with that student. So this is sort of the screen that gives you a flavor of what a plan can, be, can look like. And you can invite others to participate in the plan. So for example, um, I imagine in your world it would be similar. We have a team that's dedicated to monitoring our students, and they come together once a week or once every two weeks and review and see how they're doing. Okay. 
One of the key questions I had for the neuro team was, can I run my, the queries that I was talking about like we did in Central Falls? Um, how many teams, who, uh, students who have free and reduced lunch are failing, but they did well on the PSATs? Okay, well, why would I want to know that? Well, I just want to know because if they're doing well, I, I had a best friend in high school, I'll never forget. She aced the SATs, got the highest score in the state. She was failing math. Like, why? Well, maybe somebody might want to ask that question. Um, we also might want to look at our students in our agriculture program and see how they're doing on the PSATs or some other criteria. How are Aggie kids doing? Are we, perform are we helping them enough? How are engineer ki kids doing? How are our visual arts kids doing? How are just any kids doing? Um, and then probably the one that our reading teachers is most interested, how many students need extra reading help based on their park scores? So they were assessed last year, they were below standard. Who should we get into the, who should we be testing in STAR to see where they are now and then move them up the ladder? Does that make sense? So these are all the things we wanted to do, hence why it took a year to develop. Um, because this is not quick, it's not a bunch of spreadsheets and then you just try to run your own queries. So fingers crossed, everybody ready? All right, Haley's coming up with our, our um, piece, we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to end this for now and see if we can? They bought us a special hotspot. We're special folks. Okay, it just popped up. This is just in time technology. No one steal the password. I get to use it. Okay. Let's try that. I'm just trying to figure out which one is the hardwire. Uh, looks like over here. The one that's presenting, I think, to the oh, okay. Uh, could not be joined. The instructor comes is working? Okay, we'll give that a try. Thank you. I apologize, folks. We didn't. Oh, back to instructor con. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we're back on Let's try it again. Oops. Looks like we're getting there, so thrilled. Let's see. I wanted to be able to show you a live demo just for the reasons that I described earlier. Um, I never quite believe until I see. So even though you're seeing screenshots, it's like, does the system really exist and does it work? And I can say yes, and it's really fast, but you're not getting that flavor right now. So I apologize for that. But here we are in the system. Um, trying to figure out how to make this bigger, but I'll figure that out. So is what happens when you're on a machine you're not used to. I apologize. I um, can't figure out how to scroll. Do, 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 do. Yeah, green dot. that green dot right there. Uh, I haven't, I'm, was at a Mac school in a former there. life and I'm not anymore. Okay, so here's the dashboard that you come into when you come into NeuroTools. Um, you kind of saw the screenshot earlier where we have students on path, at risk, off path. So it gives you a flavor right away that you're coming in and, and, and seeing the system. Um, this is not our live data. When I heard we were going to be recorded, we quickly built a sample database so that you wouldn't see any of our students for obvious reasons. Um, but we do have some to play with today. So let me see if I can... Sorry, I'm not scrolling too well. Um, let's not touch. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Okay, sorry. So here are our students down the bottom of the screen, uh, lovely pictures and all. Um, and we were using, if I'm not mistaken, Eleanor. Oh, Floyd, okay. Floyd, oh, Floyd, okay, gotcha. So you can see this student right here has a timeline associated. She has a case associated with her and five flags. So that means that at some point this student either didn't submit work or fell below a particular threshold. So now I can click on her, 
I can get down there. Oops, there we go. Sorry, it's a little bit of latency. So here are the flags that are associated with this student. But what I wanted to show you is over on the right-hand side, when we were talking about the data elements associated with a student, you have just these basic general that you sort of see here where we're seeing the attendance and such. Then we have the academic pieces. We're going to try to make this look a little prettier, but right now the academic is basically our assessments. So all of the assessment data associated with this particular student is in this, in this um, tab here. And then the last one is the demographic information. So for example, here I would have this particular student's home language is Mandarin. Uh, she is an ESL student. Um, she does have a 504. She does not have an IEP. She is um, uh, free lunch. So all of those fields then become queryable in the report writer. Um, later on, so I can look up every free and reduce every free student and how are they doing in class so I can really keep an eye on my, my students who are uh, I'm concerned about. Does that make sense? I'm looking for a clock just to see where we're at. What time is it? 11 7. Thank you. We're doing great. Appreciate it. All right. The other piece that I can look on is um, this little tab here called Courses. Might take a second because we're a little bit slow here. Usually comes up very quickly. So this is the tab that gives us information about their courses and where they're at. So, sorry. I probably clicked it about 10 times. Um, we may have lost the internet a little bit. We'll see. The courses tab is the one that we saw in the um, presentation where it would show you. Uh, what their grades are at that moment in time from Canvas. Oh, here we go. And also the assignments. The cool thing about it is, and I'm not going to try it today, you can click on the assignment that they might have missed and get more information about it. So if you're an advisor and you're sitting talking to your student, you could have a conversation about, why did you miss this one? What's going on? So again, this is the screen that shows us um, that this particular student, Algebra 503, quarter one, she wasn't doing too well crashed in quarter three, but by quarter four, she was at 99%. Good for her. But again, queryable fields that I can go in later on and check out and do some information with. Does that make sense to everybody? And that was a key differentiator to us, being able to grab the data from Canvas, because we couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Um, so I needed a partner to help do that. And that allowed me to get that data in. Um, So those are the elements that you can see about a particular student. Um, Noro also has some other features that we're not using right now, just because of who we are. But you could also do things like send text messages to students and notify people of meetings and such through email or through, through texting. Um, the other thing that I talked about in the PowerPoint was the cohorts concept. Hey, that came up quick. Um, so for example, I could create someone had asked a question. I might want to create a cohort of everyone who's in a particular team at the middle school because we're team-based there. So, and we're color. Uh, it's not very creative. So we got the orange team, the yellow team, the blue team, the purple team. You get it. So I could go in and I could search for everyone in the purple team and create a cohort of that group. And then I could monitor that cohort. Or if I were a coach, I could do the same thing. Question? Yeah. Correct. A vice principal who wants to monitor six different groups can easily do it, or, or do you need to go through neuro? No, that was one of our things that we wanted to be able to do, create our own cohort groups. Yeah, exactly. So long as the data exists within the system, then I can search on them, or I could just pick students out one at a time. I could either search for and say, okay, everyone who has a 504, for example, just because I know that field is populated right now. And it'll show me on the bottom everyone who has a 504. I could just select all, or I could pick Cherry, cherry pick. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, what was the question? No, we're doing an SFTP poll. So we're placing the data on our SFTP site at night, much like we do with um, Blackboard Connect. And then they pick up the data. We could also do it manually. Uh, so we. Uh, for testing purposes, we've been doing it manually just to verify, but yeah, we can just place it out there like any other feed that we're doing, and they'll pick it up. Questions, sir? Um, you mentioned the testing and emailing. Mm -hmm. um, is this uh, in Canvas and SFTP? 
Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Thank you, Haley. She said she'd remind me if I forgot to repeat the question. Um, so one question we had was about the SIS and how to get the data in and whether you could do feeds and such. And yes, you can. You just have to be able to place it in a location for it to be pulled up by, you know, as I said, the equivalent of Blackboard Connect. The second question was whether or not it can use Canvas messaging. I don't believe at this point, but I'm sure you folks can look at it. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll have to take, I think we'd have to take a look. Yeah, I'm not sure the answer to that. We might want to look yeah. at it a little more. Okay. Um, yes? I'm sorry? Yes, you could. Yes, you could. Yes. Uh, we're sort of establishing those thresholds. Right now, we're thinking of doing it three times a day. Uh, do in the morning, do kind of a lunch feed, and then do in the afternoon. We could also do a force if we wanted to, but the quantity of the data is so large, I'm not sure we'd want to. Um, and the reason we wanted to do it at least three times a day was for sports, also for meetings with families. But sports became one of the big ones. Are they eligible to play this afternoon? <laughs> you know. Um, that be, that, it's strange, but it, yeah, it's a big piece of, uh, and we weren't able to do that this year until we started to develop this tool. We didn't know what kids were eligible or not. I mean, and that's, all, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. So I just wanted to show you one more thing. Um, hopefully it's been of interest to you. This is the cases feature. Actually, let me grab a student first. Do, 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 do. I, I'm not sure how fast it's going to go, so I'm kind of hesitating a little bit. The gist of it, I'll speak to it while it's a little bit slower, is I can now select a student, and you saw those flags earlier that were generated. I can now create a case around that student, and then I have action plans that are predefined in the system that I create, that I use. Um, with those action plans can also come notes, documents, invitations to meetings, and so on. So we're going to be using it for our response to intervention system this year, uh, starting our training in the fall, so that teachers um, we didn't have a good one before. We were using Google Sheets and keeping track of stuff. And people are doing the best they can. But with this system, we'll be able to quickly look at how a student is performing at that moment in time and then involve the appropriate people uh, in, this, in the uh, conversation and get them going. Okay. So cases is a key point for us. And again, I think a differentiator of what Noro could do for us. There were other products that we looked at that could get the grade information and we could track it, but there wasn't anything we could do with it at that point. So we wanted to make sure we could then be proactive for the student. You had a question, sir? Great question. No, uh, the question was, are we taking attendance in Canvas? No, we're actually doing it still in our SIS. So we're taking a feed from our SIS of our daily attendance into the system. Question? Is there any emphasis to have the case data go back to your Yeah. Uh, the question is, is there any um, desire, if I could use that word, to have the Canvas data then go into your SIS? Um, through this process. That would be very cool. I don't know that we'll get there. We haven't made that a key point because um, the, the exporter, the what, MGP file, um, is a challenge, is a challenge. Um, so yes, if it could be done automatic, that would be lovely, maybe in year two. Questions? The other thing that I didn't show you here, I'll just talk to it because I don't want to risk leaving and coming back in. Uh, you were asking about, there's a whole setting. I'm currently logged in as an advisor, so I don't see what a technology person would see, the person who's managing the feeds. There's another pull down on the left-hand side that says settings, and I could then use those settings to control my feeds and bring in my data in real time or set up my synchronizations. So as we've been practicing, we've been bringing in things in real time saying, Eh, let's try this again, let's try that, and then getting it all fine-tuned until we get the data in appropriately. The Canvas piece um, is a little more elegant than the SIS piece as we've been working on it, so now, now we're ready to do the SFTP and have it come in automatically. And that's kind of what I had to show you today, so any more questions? No, no, please go. I'm usually that person, so go for it. Yeah.
Yeah, right now, um, we're using the system primarily as an in-house process. There is the opportunity to contact the student and such. There's even a rooms option where you can Skype with people or do a real-time conversation through uh, this feature called rooms. What we're going to use it as, I think, in the beginning, because we're just rolling out, is kind of have it as a, our internal team at our schools to review the student. Um, and then that data can be used for family meetings and so on. There is the opportunity to invite parents on the system. Uh, we're not sure when we'll get to that. I, I would think a little bit out, because we're going to try to move in a little bit more slowly. But there is a functionality you could have, yes. Any other questions? Right. Well, thank you all for your time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for your patience while Haley was awesome with the wireless issues. And Enjoy the rest of your time at Canvas. Thank you.